Reiterating, I ran this experiment quite a while ago. I originally thought that the three cogging points were an enigma. Now I believe the cogging forces demonstrated here are the keystone to all free electromagnetic energy. Motive forces are all reactions seeking minimum energy level, and the cogging points are the points of minimum energy. Conservation is based on the same energy being required to move toward the minimum energy point as is required to move away. The concept is quite easy to understand if force and energy are likewise directed. Not so easy if they are not. Cogging forces here are parallel to the gap and the gradient energy is perpendicular. Knowledge on the effect has been deemed beyond the scope in courses that I have taken. My response was, where do I sign up for Black Magic 101? And I suffered the consequences. Unbalanced transformers exhibit the effect. Unbalanced means three poles with one pole in repulsion, such that flux and force are in opposite directions. Simple transformer equations assume constant average flux density in all poles. Finite modeling resolves to superimposing the ampere turns and the gradients are then easily determined. Circular integration or FEA give the same results. In transformers, the gradient effect is small, only a secondary inductance. Toroidal cores minimize the effect when necessary. We advocate harvesting the effect across gaps in motors and generators. Any gradient involves lateral forces, generally unaccounted for. The lateral forces can be a puzzling enigma or the source of free energy. Johnson and Milo have made generators that seem to do just that. A flux gradient explanation for Murray's generator is unchallenged so far. We are using this theory and our experimental findings to make some recommendations to Milo. I hope you find the connections between the technologies as intriguing as I do. A motor that we propose from this enigma seems to be a Murray type device turned inside out. An initial point of interest might be that our stator is effectively a pair of C-shaped electromagnets in repulsion. Our experimental data consistently shows that 35 degrees is a critical angle. We can apply that angle to the business part of our stator magnets. We are already beginning to look like the magnets that Milo uses. A good design, maximizing flux on the pole faces, requires more belly bulge on these magnets. Hmm, now they're beginning to look a lot like Johnson's magnets. Magnets are much easier to make with concentric radii. Quite easy to start with ring segments, then lop off extra material on the ends. My, 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 doesn't this look a lot like the magnet that Milo liked best? Why should Milo switch to the electromagnet option now? The reality is, he is no better than the second person to prove that magnet motors are possible. Furthermore, electromagnets have two huge advantages. Obviously, using easily machined electromagnets will require less development time than waiting for custom magnets. Milo now has the long and tedious task of determining optimum shapes and relative magnet strength before he gets to the real challenge of more power and speed. Electromagnets may offer a further advantage based on cannon technology, the Japanese camera people, not the weapon. Adding a little AC dither to the DC field might do wonders for his achieving speed. Why are we offering this free advice? Certainly, we are not in this for purely altruistic reasons. But, remember the Beaumont brain. Energy independent gradient forces, or whatever else makes Milo spin, will lead to viable motor and generator products in the very near future. Milo's success brings that day closer. After that day, the best patented product will win. Our hat is off to Milo and ready to be thrown into that ring.